with me being up the mountain in Font Rameau, I'm training with Bashir Abdi, Andy Butchart. Bashir Abdi is European record holder in the marathon, Olympic medalist, world medalist. Butchi has came top 10 at the Olympics in the last three Olympics. And so I guess the reason there hasn't been, you know, lots of filming, lots of camera work, A, it's not really my training to share. So if you're joining in with another group, it's kind of not your training. <laughs> That's really simple. It's not my training program. And so the transparency can't be the same, which means I'm not going to share the training of Bashir Abdi to be the world Olympic medalist. I, I can talk about parts of it, but it's not, it didn't feel right that, you know, to be sharing somebody else's work, you could probably say. Um, and then also you're going to attract to try to keep up with, you know, these absolute titans of the sport that, you know, these guys are like in, in a lot of ways in, in a lot of the training that we're doing, they're, they're ahead of me. In fact, probably in everything that we were doing. And so I can't just show up to the track or, or the, the tempo place or the long run place, you know, holding a camera or a drone. And like my attitude needed to be, Stephen, you're here to get as fit as you possibly can. You're here to extract every single bit of fitness out of today's session that you can. And it's going to require absolutely maximum focus on just trying to keep up. And so it wasn't as easy to, to yeah, to like, like show up and, and record bits. And, and, and honestly, I, I was just so focused on being able to simply keep up that the film inside of things had to take a back seat. And so it doesn't mean I didn't want to do updates. It, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong. I just was tired from the training or I was focusing heavily on trying to keep up, getting that training right and, and being only focused on that rather than, yeah, my mind being divided between filming and, and, and training. So look, it, it's been a... A really good camp so far. I'm getting, this is probably now around three weeks, which is that kind of like sweet spot in a way for altitude where you're, you're starting to have done enough time at camp that you should be feeling pretty good. You're adjusting to the altitude. Um, the training has been, you know, it's been really tough where I think probably most runs are, are pretty fast. Your, your typical day is like 12 miles in the morning, five miles at night, which was an increase from what I was doing at home where I was probably running the, the best part of an 80 to 85 mile week. Now you're kind of looking at it being like 110 to, to 120 miles a week. And that's, that's just the program. You, you kind of just have to, what is it like sink or swim or, you know, adapt or die. It's kind of, this is what it takes to, to be really good. So get involved. The next part of that is lots more, lots more work on the track. Um, I, I, I don't know that every session, especially at the beginning, was, was call it like meant to be, let's say, like VO2 max effort. But when you're not as fit as the other guys and you're just trying to keep up for as long as you can, it almost becomes VO2 max effort on like each time you're on the track, which that was certainly interesting. It was hard, really hard work. So you're running reps on the track quicker than you were doing reps back at sea level. And, and you're currently at like, you know, 6,000 feet of altitude. Um, recovery days are not like I was doing recovery days at home. The, the ground's uneven, you know, the trails, the surface, the hills, you're just, you're constantly rolling your ankles. You're constantly having to like focus because if you don't stay focused, you'll fall because you'll trip on a rock or, or, and that from a mental preparation is like, it's absolutely awesome. And, and I got to say, like, there's kind of a bit of advice in there that it's like, don't always pick the like perfect road loop or, or, or the perfect path because the brain gets a lot of training benefit out of learning to be focused for the entire run. And it does make you like a little bit more tired. And so then what happens is the day that you pick to actually go to the road loop, for example, and you don't have to focus on the rocks and you don't have to sort of like focus on managing your effort up and down hills. Well, then you get to just run on the road loop 
and all your body and brain has to do is focus on running forward. And, and basically it just feels way easier than what it had felt on the like rough terrain or the challenging terrain. And, and that's, I guess I forgot that not only in 2020 when I ran 209 and 6108, did we train at altitude? Did we, you know, did we run at 610 pace, 620 pace per mile? I kind of forgot that those runs also had that extra layer of difficulty because of the, the sort of undulation underfoot and the rough ground and the up and down hills. And, and then your, your, your brain is being sort of like stressed and challenged every day because there's no, there's no like free runs. There's no free runs where you just get to go jog. There's no free runs where you get to go run, listening to your music and, and not having to focus on where's my foot going? I don't want to roll my ankle. I don't want to stand on these stones. I don't want to, you know, trip myself on this run. And, and I do believe that then when you go back down the mountain and you sort of like freshen up and, and like it's race day and you've got this like lovely tarmac and hopefully, you know, race day shoes and things like this, well, then you run so fast because you were so used to having to focus on all these other things, like, you know, not rolling the ankle up and down the hills, the rough terrain, that suddenly it's like, wait a minute, now all I need to focus on is like running forward. Like that's easy. And so look, it's been intense. I, I think it's now, this is like week three, around like 110 to 120 mile a week. Um, you're looking at like the long runs. They, they went from like, I think 15 miles was all I could keep up week one. I think I kept up for 10 and then I had to like fight my way to get to like 15. And then week two, I was able to keep up, I think until like maybe like well actually I, I ended up kind of running a little bit quicker on on the second lap of the loop but I actually wanted to do like longer like maybe like I was thinking like 20 22 miles but then I bit off more than I could chew you could say and I went a bit too quick on the second lap which then kind of like bit me in the ass so I, I had to stop at like 18 I think it was and then week three on the long run I actually did 24 miles which I think I was really happy with that was it wasn't as fast as some of the runs in 2020, like as in one of them, not, not all of them, but, but it was longer than I had ever done in 2020. And I think when I came here in 2020, it has been really nice to compare because that's when you sort of get confidence that if you're capable of doing similar stuff to what you wear when you race really well, well, that kind of should tell you something. And then similarly, if you're not capable of doing similar splits or similar heart rates or, or you know, similar just distance and pace, like, like in 2020, when I came here, I think I did 15 mile, 16 mile, 20, and I kind of averaged 542, 532, I think, and then 520. And so this time I went 15, 18, 24. And even though the paces are a bit different, I think it was like 530, 5. 30 and then 538 I guess it was but because in 2020 I didn't feel amazing in the marathon I felt a lot better in the half marathon that's why I've like prioritized doing some longer runs which is exactly what I'll then do this weekend I'll go out and do another sort of 24 25 miles rather than trying to focus on let's get faster it's kind of like well let's get longer because we're preparing for a marathon and yes i still ran 209 in 2020 but i actually felt far better in the half marathon running 6108 so it's kind of like learning from what has worked in the past but like still trying to fine tune that you know maybe you could prepare better this time so Look, it's, it's been really good. Like I, I, I've definitely upped my game quite a lot, you could say, and, and, and I needed to. Like, it's like I, I forgot that to be good at running is, is really, really fucking hard. Um, and I mean like to be like tip top good at running, not like, like I can stay at home and, and, and I can train in this like, this kind of like way that, that it's more comfortable and, and I'll still run relatively you know solid i'll still get relatively solid results from training and from racing but it's like i just i actually don't think i did forget like i think when i was getting closer to races lately you know i was speaking to the psychologist i, I was sort of thinking about it myself i had no confidence and i wasn't like i just wasn't content with what i was doing 
And the reason I was like shit scared to go race is because at the end of the day, like I just wasn't putting in the hard yards and the hard work that I knew it took. And so because I know what I did in 2020 and because I know the fitness that created, it's almost like difficult to go into, like, like four weeks out from a race, three weeks out from a race, two weeks out from a race, I'm kind of still like confident enough, you could say, in terms of like, like, oh yeah, this training's fine. What we're doing's good. But then when it gets to like two days out from a race, like like three days out from a race, suddenly my psychology's like, this training is not enough. This training is not building the fitness that you perhaps built in 2020. And so unless you change your goals, unless you decide that you no longer want to qualify for an Olympics, you no, you no longer want to run sub 210 for a marathon, well, then you're going to have to fix this shit. And that's ultimately why I came up the mountain again, because it was like, well, fuck, like, if I'm only going to be happy four weeks out from a race, three weeks out from a race, and I'm sitting at home and I'm comfortable and I'm in that comfortable environment and nobody's pushing me, well, unless you're willing to change your goals, you better wake up and stop doing that. And that's ultimately what happened. I just kind of got fed up not being confident. And it's not... You earn confidence by making really good decisions. You earn confidence by doing the stuff that you know that's what it takes to, you know, run really well. And and if you're lucky enough, like I was, to be exposed to what it takes and you got to learn from Mo Farah and you got to learn from Bashir Abdi and, you know, Coach Gary Locke and and you got to learn what these guys do and, and how then that creates these amazing results. Well, it's like, shit, if you're going to be exposed to that and you're going to see it and you're going to learn from it, We'll, we'll keep doing that, do that in future, keep putting that same effort and same work in. And that's where I kind of made a mess of it, that I, that, I, that I believed or my brain wanted to believe that there might be another way to achieve some of these big results. And it's kind of like, yeah, maybe there's not. Maybe it ultimately just comes down to who's willing to, you know, work really, really hard and push and push. And, you know, I, I think I was texting the physiologist the other day and, and I actually, I think I put it in Strava and, and I was kind of texting him and I was like, it's like, it's like we train in a way that it's like, you just believe that there's no such thing as talent. There's no such thing as ability. There's no such thing as any of these sort of words. And you just work hard every day. And you outwork the people that you're going to eventually race against. And now, because I'm working that hard, because there's so much respect for the training program, because it is so bloody hard, well, then I'm doubling down on the recovery. I'm doubling down on the strength work. I'm doubling down on all the things that's going to help me just get through the week. And I've probably got about another... I'd say like another 10 days of like full training and then I start to taper it down and I start to really freshen up a little bit to, you know, go to Dublin Marathon and, and, and try have one of the best races in my life. That's, that's the goal. And, and hopefully I can look left and look right on race day and think to myself, I've prepared as hard or harder than everybody on this start line. And that's the goal. That's where the confidence is going to come from. And that's where like, you know, days like today where, you know, you could do 10 miles, you know, you could do eight miles, but it's like, no, like Bashir would do 12. And so I do 12 and I, I just stop making the excuses to why I should do less or, or stop justifying why you should do less. And it's like, no, like at the very least match your competition. And actually, if you want to achieve something better than them, or you want to be that, you know, 1%, well, you might have to do more and it's ugly it's not easy there's days you're tired there's days i was warming up for track stuff knowing i was going to have to go faster than i normally go knowing i was going to be way out of my depth because they these guys paces are are ultimately quicker than mine but nobody was asking you to like nail everything you're just ask to show up just keep showing up keep trying and and ultimately you get better as the weeks go on so look that's, that's a bit of an update. Um, it's been really hard. It's been really satisfying because I think when you're applying yourself to anything in life, you can be super proud of yourself. You can be super happy with what you're doing. And I'm able to go to bed every night and be like, kid, you're a fucking rock star at the minute. You're just getting it done. You're doing the hard things. You're putting work in, even if you're really tired. You're going to the gym when maybe other people would skip it. You're doing your stretching at night. You're doing your foam rolling. You've been meditating again. And, and it feels like when I'm applying myself absolutely fully 
do, do whatever it is at that moment in time that I'm pursuing, I can lay in bed at night and just be so content that I'm doing exactly what I should be doing. I'm exactly in the right place that I need to be to achieve what it is I want to achieve. And ultimately what I want to achieve without like, I don't want to like, like hype it all up and anything like this, but it's like, I'm starting to believe that I'll be prepared in a way that I could like, you know, I'm like, I could win Dublin Marathon. And I don't want that to sound arrogant or, or cocky or anything like this. I just, for once in, in probably the last two years, just really know that I'm doing the stuff, the training, the hard yards that, that it will take to, to win a race. It doesn't mean I will, but it means that I'm at the very least giving myself the best chance possible, which that's a really good start. So look, that's an update. I didn't bring a tripod, so my shoulder's getting so dead. Um, but as always, if, if you want to check out, you know, joggingroom.com, some of the stuff on there that's, you know, going to guide you to that recovery stuff, the nutrition stuff, psychology, strength conditioning, everything that I'm doing when I talk about in between training to stay healthy for the next day, to be fresher for the next day, if that's even possible, it's all there. Um, and yeah, take care, like, subscribe, you know, do those nice things. The channel's growing really, really nicely, but you know, with some more subscribes, some more likes, maybe by Christmas, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll be doing really well in that department. But, you know, I appreciate all you guys and, you know, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching.